Okay, hi, welcome back. Uh, this is lecture two, TCS Toolkit. And today I'm going to talk about basic asymptotics. So for most lectures, I'm going to try to put up some um, references for the topic. Uh, so for today, I mean, if you want to read more stuff about basic asymptotics, big O, and all that kind of stuff, estimating functions, here are three uh, suggestions for you. <coughs> okay, so we've all, I think, encountered such basic uh, quantities as this one, the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i, some of the first n uh, natural numbers. And I guess we all know the formula that this is n times n plus 1 over 2, uh, or to expand it out a little bit, a half n squared plus a half n. Okay, and I trust that you're all familiar with big O notation, and uh, if you were going to use big O notation here, then you would write that this is order n squared. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about in this lecture, but um, I'll add a bit of a more advanced level than this. Okay, so let me uh, remind you of the basic definition. Um, okay, so recall, we say that a function um, f of x is order g of x, and we should really add as x goes to infinity. mean that um, okay, there exists some big constant c and some other big constant x0 such that f of x is at most uh, c times g of x for all x bigger than this x0. Okay, st stands for me uh, such that. I'll write that a lot. Um, okay. And so it says that, you know, uh, usually g of x is a simpler function than f of x, and this says that eventually for large enough x, uh, f of x is basically no bigger than g of x up to a constant factor c, okay? And uh, most people, or let's see, most mathematicians like to put this absolute value in here, allowing that the possibility that f of x is like a negative function, uh, or sometimes negative function. Uh, it doesn't usually come up that much in theoretical computer science because we're, you know, often our functions are things like they're counting things or they're uh, running times, and these things are inherently non-negative. And I kind of personally prefer, I don't want to like insist on this in this class, but I kind of prefer a definition that simply said that I got rid of this and had that f of x is for large enough x not negative and at most c times g of x. But uh, we might be a little bit ambiguous about this. I'll say a bit more later why I prefer this way of writing things. Okay, so this is the meaning of big O notation when your parameter x, which is often, when it's going to infinity, it's often called n, or that's arising often in TCS. Uh, but you can also use similar notation for a parameter that's going to zero. Uh, so we have a similar notation For when uh, the parameter x is going to zero, usually as a positive number, and the only difference is that this part changes to for all uh, x less than so this some positive x naught. Okay, and usually in this scenario, or the most common situation in this scenario is you would use a letter that's denoting, denoting a small number like epsilon or delta. And so generally, if you, oftentimes when people are using this big O notation, they don't actually write like x going to infinity or x going to zero, but they trust you get the picture based on whether it's called n or epsilon or whatnot. But to be totally formal, you should write it. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a definition that's usually given um, if you just have like one function and you want to say, you know, it's uh, on the order of this simpler looking function. But uh, often you'll see extensions of this definition, uh, which are, look more complicated. They're not just of this simple form. And people use them even though they don't exactly define them. And actually, the whole situation of definitions around big O notation is a little bit slippery. But I like to use, and I propose, this, this idea has not caught on too much, but people have proposed using the following extension, and they implicitly use it, and I like it, uh, which is this. If you see this notation like big O of g of x, not necessarily just sitting there plain by itself on the right-hand side of an expression, 
then it really denotes an anonymous function which um, has the property that it's big O of g of x. Okay, that sounds a little bit circular, but what I mean is it denotes an anonymous function f of x that satisfies this property, okay, such that uh, it's at most c times g of x for some uh, c and x greater than or equal to x0. Uh, so you might not quite grasp yet what I'm trying to get at here, but what I'm trying to get at here is a different way to write this, and in fact a more accurate way, instead of merely saying that this function grows at most like n squared, would be to write that this is um, a half n squared plus big O of n. Okay, and this is a very common notation, and you see it doesn't quite fit the basic framework that looks like this. You've got like an O of n sitting here. But the meaning of this is that you know, this exact quantity is equal to this plus some other function, which it's simple enough we know it's exactly half n, but it's, it's some other function, and you're asserting that whatever this function is, maybe you don't know what it is, but it grows no faster than the function n. Does that make some sense? I should mention, by the way, that if you have any question, just you can shout it out. You don't even have to put up your hand or anything. Just feel free to ask. Um, another thing you, another way you could write the same thing, which is maybe even a little bit nicer, is to factor out um, the main term. So the main term here is a half n squared, and if we factor it out, we got half n squared times one plus. Well, I won't even actually calculate exactly what it is. I guess it's one over n, but never mind. It's a uh, order one over n. Okay, and actually, this is a really appealing uh, conclusion. When it's so simple, you could just maybe write this. But this sort of thing is a really appealing conclusion when you have a complicated expression. Usually, uh, the thing you dream to get, or a really good thing to get, is sort of the exact expression in like a simple form times uh, something that's going to one. Okay, so this is an expression that's going to one as n gets large. And it's sort of not just giving you the, the value of the quantity up to some mystery constant factor, but it's getting you up to like, you know, the factor one. So this is like a, called a, uh, an approximation with multiplicative error that's tending to one. Okay, so this is like a little bit better even than saying that this is proportional to n squared. Okay, so I mean, this is bread and butter in TCS. I mean, all the time you uh, have some complicated expression, you're trying to roughly understand how quickly it grows or shrinks. And you know, maybe the thing you're most useful, used to is bounding it from above, say upper bounding it, up to a constant factor. And that's the domain of the big O notation. But probably, most likely, you may have seen uh, you know, the analogs and further friends of big O notation and we'll definitely need to get used to them. So there's sort of an analogy here. We have this big O notation and it's sort of like uh, less than or equal to. It's used for bounding things from above. Uh, there's the opposite notation which is big omega and that's kind of like greater than or equal to. And the final friend here is big theta, and that's kind of like, um, well, approximately equal to up to a constant. Okay, so big omega is just like the opposite of big O. So uh, you say that f of x is big omega of g of x to mean that there exists a positive constant, probably small, so I'll write it as little c, and also a large constant x0. Uh, let me continue here. Well, such that f of x is greater than or equal to c times g of x for all x greater than or equal to x0. And this notion of theta is, uh, we said that f of x is theta of g of x just if both hold. So f of x is sort of at most up to a constant g of x and also at least. 
Okay, so the first dream whenever you have like a you know, complicated expression is to determine like a simple function g of x. Say your complicated expression is f of x, simple function g of x, such that f of x is theta of g of x, because then you've exactly nailed down the rate at which it grows up to a constant factor. Okay, so this one we know is in fact theta of n squared. Okay, because not only is at most a constant times n squared, it's at least a constant times n squared as well. Uh, there's more though. So we're gonna introduce some even more such symbols. Uh, so an analogy with big O and little O, uh, sorry, with big O and big omega, there's little O. It's impossible to tell on the board what's little and big, but that's a little O. And little omega. Okay, and the analogs here are strictly less than and strictly greater than. Okay, so I'll just define little o in case you don't know it, and little omega is again analogous. So, for example, we say that uh, f of x is little o of g of x. Well, what we can do, say this, use the language of calculus, and I guess I will do that somewhat here. Uh, if the ratio f of x over g of x goes to zero. Okay, and this is always assuming that um, here x is tending to something, usually infinity. Okay, so this is saying that not only does f of x grow more slowly than g of x, it does so in like a significant enough way that sort of g of x is asymptotically even greater than f of x. Okay, so for example, I mean the simplest example is, you know, I don't know, 10 n, this function is little o of n squared. Okay, and little omega is the uh, opposite for things when f of x grows asymptotically faster than g of x. Okay, any questions? So you may think that we're done, but uh, actually there's even more uh, notation like this that people like to use, and you'll come to like to use it too because it gives you even more flexibility, but now we're going a little bit beyond what they tell you at the very first. So uh, here's some normal notation. Uh, this one I kind of like. f of x is poly g of x. This means that uh, it's uh, g of x to the big O of 1. OK, and already this is, again, like using this more sophisticated version of the notation where O is something that denotes an anonymous function. So here, this is denotes a function, some function that is eventually bounded by some fixed universal constant. So you can think of o, big O of one as just meaning like a constant, okay? And this is saying that f of x is at most uh, this g of x function to some constant power, okay? Actually, this notation is a bit uh, more slippery than uh, other ones because you don't even see the variable name in here, right? So if you see something like order one, you're not even sure exactly what is the name of the variable. So which is why it's you know always uh, hygienically best if you explicitly state like you know x is going to zero or x is going to infinity. Okay, and another popular one, which is kind of fun, I also like to use f of x is big O tilde of g of x. This is the one for when you're really lazy. This is one, if you can't exactly figure out what like f of x is, but you more or less figured it out, you can use this notation. And uh, this one means that uh, f of x is um, g of x times poly log g of x. Okay, so it's mostly like big order, big O of g of x, but you allow yourself some factors which are logarithmic in this expression. Okay, so let me give you some examples. So a little example here is if you had something like n squared times log cubed n, this is big O tilde of n squared. Okay. So this is like when you have a running time and you're like, oh, I bounded it by n squared log cubed n, and you want to like say to the reader, you know, don't worry, it's more or less like a quadratic running time, even though that's not strictly true. Then you can put a little tilde up here and it looks pretty good. Um, uh, another example, just to illustrate that this tilde does not always literally mean log n itself, 
Um, if we had some expression like n to the fifth times 3 to the n, this is O tilde of 3 to the n. Right, because you allow yourself some polylogs in this expression. The log of this expression is n, so you're allowing yourself some extra powers of n here. Okay. Let me ask you a question. This is like a little warm-up question. Is this thing O tilde of 2 to the n? I'm getting some head shaking. Uh, why not? Yeah. The power like Yeah, I guess. Sorry, what's your name? Misha. Misha. Yeah, I guess I didn't. Uh, only on the fly did I think of like if you had to like literally prove it as opposed to just like feel like it's not true. It's it's certainly not true in the sense that two to the n grows much uh, more slowly than three to the n. I suppose to really check that it's not true, you should look at the ratio between them, which is one point five to the n, and double check that that's not as small as poly n, which it's not. OK, so it's, you know, it just goes to show that like, you, know, you get a little bit sloppy. You cannot get too sloppy. There is a difference between like 3 to the n and 2 to the n. Um, OK. In fact, this notation has uh, another meaning. Uh, depending on whether your parameter, or really depending on whether g of x is getting large or small. So this uh, notation is only really used when like, g, it's, g is itself like a function which is getting large. So you think of like log of g as something that's also getting large, but not as fast. You know, for the situation when it's a situation you know, when you have uh, I don't know, epsilon going to 0, and like maybe g of epsilon is also going to 0. Then this uh, lazy notation, like f of x equals o twiddle g of x, means f of x is g of x times, you can write less than or equal to here, polylog, not g of x, but 1 over g of x. So let me just illustrate what I mean here. Similarly, if you have uh, something like f of epsilon, I guess I should have written x here. If you have f of epsilon is epsilon squared times log 1 over epsilon. OK, this is a function that is basically like epsilon squared, but a little bit bigger by a logarithmic factor. But note it's log of 1 over epsilon. This would be O twiddle of epsilon. OK, this is sometimes called, uh, this kind of expression is sometimes called quasi-linear. And I guess sometimes I should mention, some people prefer to write like O star instead of O twiddle, but I think O twiddle is a bit more standard. And one last bit of notation, and then we'll get into some examples, I think. There's also, you know, uh, I just erased it, but there's also a big omega twiddle and big theta twiddle, and each of them is designed to say, like, you know, you have to put the logs in the right place to say that you're allowing for some extra factors that you couldn't pin down. So for one more example, if you write f of x is omega twiddle g of x, this means that f of x is at least g of x over polylog g of x. So, for example, you know, n cubed over log squared n is omega twiddle n cubed. Okay. So, as I said, your your goal uh, in life, usually when you're founding a complicated expression is to find like a, a simple expression. You know, like uh, if you're trying to bound some f of x, you're trying to find some simple g of x, which f of x is either ideally big theta of or even better. 
Oh, yeah, thank you. I guess that's, I didn't know what example I wrote. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that's in a notation you see. The question is, is there a canonical definition of this expression that you sometimes see like, oh, epsilon of, you would probably most likely see, okay, there's two things that are used for different things. One is sometimes you'll see O sub epsilon of one, or O sub n of one. And sometimes people write this because they're like, oh, I didn't say what the letter, like the name of the variable was, so I'll just like stick it in here. Like when you have O of one, I'll stick it in here to like tell the reader what the, the name of the parameter is. Another situation is like when you have, you're trying to bound some quantity that has more than one variable in it, and like the exact meaning of like big O notation when there's more than one variable is again like kind of slippery, but um, you may sometimes see something like, I don't know, O sub K of N squared, and usually this means there are two parameters K and N squared, and usually this means the expression in hand is order of N squared if you treat K as a complete constant. So like, if you prove a bound that's like two to the two to the k squared times n squared, and you know, you want to be a little emphasizing the cool part, the n squared, you're like, this is big O sub k of n squared. Okay. So, I'm gonna introduce some uh, slightly non-standard uh, terminology. What I saw recently, and I kind of like it, just so that we have a phrase for uh, the kind of simple function that you're shooting for when you're trying to you know, bound things using big O and so forth. So this is not completely standard notation or terminology, but here it is. So let's say a function g of n is in standard form if it's a product of some different simple kinds of functions. Okay, so let's say type one, uh, constant, not well, a constant, so like, I don't know, six or square root two pi or what have you. Um, another kind of expression is constant powers of log n. Let me write, I don't know, log, okay. Let's think about this in a second. We write ln n. Uh, on the subject of logs, um, you know, this is ln, ln n is a good way to write log to the base e of n, because then whether you have a computer scientist or a mathematics, mathematician at hand, they always know what you mean by ln n. Uh, computer scientists like log base two usually, and sometimes I've seen, and I kind of like, L sub g, n for log base 2 of n. It's not very standard, but if you need to make the distinction, that's a reasonable one. And finally, if in, you're ever writing a paper and you write log n, if it makes a difference to you whether you mean log base 2 or log base e, then you should say in the paper. Often it doesn't come up because if you're not trying to bound things very carefully, then all the logs are the same in the sense, you know, log n is theta of log n, or sorry, let's say log base 2 of n. Uh, but let me over here just write ln n for com concreteness. Uh, okay, so for example, uh, ln squared n or 1 over root log n are possibilities. That's ln n to the minus 1 half. Uh, another category of simple functions is constant powers of n. Okay, so for example, n cubed or, uh, I don't know, 1 over n squared. And another category is exponential functions, which I mean uh, constant to n. So e.g. 2 to the n, or 3 to the n, or 2 to the n over 2, which of course is root 2 to the n. Now let me throw in one more. Uh, you know, n to the c n, where c is a constant. Okay. So, of course, this does not exhaust all kinds of uh, functions, but like, in many cases, 
when you're trying to bound something, like the nice bound will, you know, that your function is big O of or big theta of, will be expressed as some product of these kinds of functions. Okay? So examples of things that are in standard form, maybe we even have some on the board, like n to the fifth times 3 to the n is 1, or uh, 6n squared root log n is another one, or root 2 pi root n, n to the n, e to the minus n. That one has all five kinds in it. Does anybody recognize this expression? You can put up your hand or say it. Yeah? Yeah, what's your name? Thomas. Thomas, yeah. We'll see it next time, but this is a Stirling's approximation says that n factorial is very close to this quantity, which is a good thing to know. Um, Yeah, so as I said, this does not exhaust all possibilities for what you see. For example, it's not uncommon to see like log log n, and I didn't put that up there, but these are some examples. And I put these up here because for these particular five examples, like each type is asymptotically smaller than the next type. Uh, even with arbitrary positive powers. Okay, so maybe I didn't express that perfectly, but what I mean by that, let's say comparing type 2 to type 3, is that, like, you know, even ln n to the power of 100 is asymptotically smaller than even little o of n to the 1 tenth. Okay, so these are the kind of things I hope you're familiar with, but if you're not, I mean, you can. Uh, see examples of them here, or maybe comparing type 2 to type 3, we can see that, you know, even, you know, 100 n to the 50 is little o of 1.1 to the n. Okay. Uh, and indeed, even within one type, if you have like a higher positive power, you're asymptotically bigger. Okay, so that's an example of how, an example of that is that um, 2 to the n is little o of 3 to the n. Okay, because this is, you know, uh, well, 2 to the log base 3 of 2 or something to the power of n. Okay, so as I said, it's not a you know, complete set of functions, but generally when you have some complicated expression, you're going to try to find some standard form function that looks uh, a product of, product of these. And first step is to try to maybe show your complicated function is big theta of one such function. 